Good morning. I'm in my office and you're very precariously and slightly on the wonk, balanced on top of a pile of boxes of labels. Uh, it's the first chance I've had to turn any kind of filming on. I didn't film my journey in. I've got my... I took the ham and cheese one from the magic bag from the bakery yesterday. So that's going to be my lunch. That's very exciting. Just going to get myself organised, go and make myself a cup of tea. Dan and I went to bed late last night. I am normally in bed by about nine, half nine and asleep somewhere between 10 and 11. We went to bed about quarter to midnight last night. I don't know what got into us. I'm feeling OK, to be honest. I felt tired after a good eight hours the other day anyway, didn't I? So... And it's Friday. those off it's too bright <laughs> apologies for the engine noise I just turned my engine on because I'm about to drive home but normally I wait to turn it on until after I've spoken to you so I'll keep it brief just to say I've not really filmed anything it's been a busy day I'm absolutely exhausted they have cramps I'm gonna set up my audiobook and get home I'm gonna have my chewing gum I don't know why this is my habit when I leave work Oh, on any of my working days I get in the car I put on my audiobook and I have one of my extra refreshers tropical flavoured chewing gum and I look forward to it it's one of those little silly tiny little routines that I just love just about to put my pyjamas on and edit but I thought I'd just show you my shelves <laughs> this is I'm still playing about with them and they still need uh, painting or staining but I am um, reordered the books a bit to make them a bit neater and I don't know if you can see but I've tried to do like a rainbow <laughs> oh, I had so much fun doing this yesterday just faffing about and then these are just pictures that I uh, currently don't have a place for, um, but I've just lent them up there. And that's my little everything is better in pyjamas tile. And I woke up this morning and saw it and it just made me so happy. I've ordered some lights actually that should be here already. Just like some little fairy lights to go on it. Oh, I might go and see if they've been delivered yet. So now, look, if I set up my tripod here, the view behind me is really cute. It's no longer just a mess of boxes and a blank wall. I'm so happy. My lights haven't arrived yet. It says they're arriving before 7pm though, so you will see lights before the end of this vlog. It's arrived. What time is it now? It's about just come out for 10 to 7 now. My vlog is edited, it's just exporting. And I can get that uploaded and do the thumbnail. Why can't I open this? It looked like it was going to be easier than this. Okay, this is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, so it says three meters. Because I just wanted it long enough to go on my shelves and then travel down to the plug. But I've got a feeling that it's not going to be long enough. <laughs> I 
And you hear Phoebe running up the stairs laughing like a vampire. Oh no, that's very short. I thought three metres was longer than that. Let's do the flicker test. Right, let's see if they flicker on screen. I don't believe they do. Well, that is good. Okay, because I can always go back and get a longer one. Let's see what the reach is going to be like from my plug here to over there. They're so pretty, but they're not long enough. So what I envisaged was, yes, to have some down in this corner to light up the corner, but then I wanted them kind of bunched up a lot more, you know, like little co coils of them along here and then on the top one as well. So I think I'm going to need one about double the length. So back to Amazon I go, but don't you worry, there are plenty of places where I can put fairy lights where I will use these. Friday night is pizza night. Yes. Did you like my song? Can I not answer that question please? <laughs> um, I keep forgetting to do song of the day. So I'm passing the responsibility on to everybody else. And people like your taste in music. Oh dear then. Let's see. Song that I really liked growing up that wasn't cool or trendy but had a really great video. Was it Money for Nothing by Dire Straits? <gasps> my dad loved that song as That's well. why it wasn't cool. Uh, oh. <laughs> my dad had, they, my mum and dad saw Dire Straits in concert as well. I always thought they were American. Yeah, they're from Newcastle. Yeah, I, I, li I think I must have found that out in like the last five years. Or certainly Mark years. Knopfler is, I don't know about the rest of them. Yeah, Mark Knopfler, yeah. So yeah, I don't, well, that leads me to a little story in that case because it's, I mean, this sounds morbid, but it's not. My my whole life, Dad, my dad always knew what song he wanted played at his funeral, and it was um, the piece by Mark Knopfler called "Local Hero." Mm -hmm. From is it called "Local Hero"? It is, I oh, think. I don't know. It's the theme tune to the film "Local Hero" by Mark Knopfler. He actually had that at his funeral, as he wished, and it's a beautiful piece of music and a. Uh, very emotional piece of music for us. And I remember when he was in his uh, little hospice room, we listened to Dire Straits on the CD player in there. We don't know if he could hear it, but that's what we played is the Dire Straits album. So that's a very good choice. Oh, cheers. Tonight I am on the Sainsbury's House Suave. Right, contains questions. May I have a cupcake? please. That's from J Bulldog Mum. Yes. Yes, you can have a cupcake. You're actually balanced on the cupcake box with the cupcakes in. There is five left and they're still really good. So I'll make sure you get one of those and a napkin. Okay, from Amni5456. Hello, Ali. Loving the daily vlogs. Thank you very much. I have a question for you. What is orange squash? Have a great day. Thank you. I have had quite a good day. Orange squash is orange cordial, basically. Uh, you, you mix a little, it's concentrated, you mix it with water and it flavours the water. Why it's called squash and not cordial, I'm not sure. It's sugar free. I don't know if that's the difference. Then I think you can get squash. I don't know, I would think of cordial as something that's quite sugary and squash as something that's not sugary, that might not be the difference, but basically it's it's a type of cordial. Thank you for asking. Christine Cart, uh, hello Ali, love seeing you and your lovely family. Uh, your drawings are really good, are you self-taught? Oh, that's, oh, they're really not. They're, I, no, yes, I am self-taught. I've always been someone who loves drawing and then, but, but lacks confidence. And then I discovered, uh, a particular artist called Stephen Reddy. I'll get the book to show you. So I discovered this artist, Stephen Reddy, who did a craftsy class. I'm not even sure if craftsy is still a thing anymore. And I actually bought the class as a lifetime class. I still can't work out how to go and access it, but I just loved the way he taught uh, 
the how he taught drawing, how he taught watercolor, how he taught to let go of perfection. So I actually ordered one of his books, which I got on Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure. If, where, who's it published by? Mon, Monicelli press.com you can get them on amazon he's based in seattle and it's everyday sketching and drawing and i never looked back after this he doesn't worry about getting it right getting it wrong perspective depth anything like that and he just churns out the most amazing urban sketches and from that i discovered uh people like taria at taria's sketchy adventures who's got a youtube channel which I'll link underneath. And yeah, they just taught me to have a bit more confidence, or not confidence, but just not worry and not judge myself and draw because I enjoy drawing. And that's what changed it. That's the short answer. I've got to change my battery. There we go, battery changed. Sip of wine. Oh, that's so nice. I'm gonna have to be careful not to guzzle that. Julie Rogers. Hi, Julie. What is it that you sprinkle on the ground in your chicken run to disinfect? I'm wondering if this is something I should do for my hens too. We use a ground sanitising powder that we buy from Amazon. Let me go and tell you the name of it. Extra Select Ground Sanitising Powder. It is a disinfecting, drying and deodorising powder for chicken coops and runs. What it does is it helps to keep down the smell of ammonia from where they poop as they walk about, especially in the summer. But it also helps keep down uh, bacteria and uh, flies and, and, and all of that. So we have found it, and you can just, as long as the chickens aren't in the run when you do it, so we sometimes do it after they've gone to bed in their coop or if they're out wandering around the garden or should I say if they're out destroying the garden and we just um it tells you how much you should have per square meter and we just have a little scoop and we have a sieve that we bought specifically for it and we just go about sieving it all over the run basically and yeah I would say it's relatively inexpensive and, a, and nice to know that you're keeping them nice and clean. We do it maybe once a week, once every two weeks. How many more shall I do? I don't want to... Do it. Three. Go. Three more. I have a question from the answer of a question. Does Dan... Oh, it's for you, Dan. Oh, this is Jill Beck, by the way. Hello, Jill. Does Dan leave the sets of Lego that he builds, builds together or does he use the bits to build his own creations? Hi, Jill. Do you want to sit down? Yes, I'll That's sit down. Soft. I leave them together for a little while, and then when someone tells me that they've had, they're fed up with them, I put them away, because some of my sets are quite big. Um, There's one on our bedroom window still at the moment. Yeah, it's my birthday present. That'll stay up for a little while longer. Yeah, thank and you very the, much. And there's one on our bedroom floor. Yeah, that's my other birthday present to myself. And that'll stay a, there until I find a box for it. There's a few brickheads <coughs> in the living room. Brickheads, but brickheads stay up. <laughs> <coughs> um, so they stay up for a little while. And, and then um, what I do is I find boxes for them. So clear plastic boxes. And I put them away. Um, so I put them away in their sets and instructions. I don't like to mix my sets. I like my sets to be rebuilt as the sets that they are. I've got, we've got, well, the girls and I've got a box of mismatch, mix and match stuff that we free build from. Free build. Like free from. diving. I don't like to mix my sets. So if I've got my Batmobile, that's my Batmobile. If I've got my Lego Star Wars, um, Millennium Falcon, that's just the Millennium Falcon, so yeah, no, okay. don't mix. No, no, no one's gonna make you, no one's gonna make you mix your sets, don't worry. You Calm promise? down. <laughs> Jill, how, honestly, my heart is racing at the thought of mixing my sets. This won't happen. I did when I was younger, but I'm no, not doing that anymore. What no. about you, Lilia? Would you mix your sets? Lego sets. No. no. Lily is a bit of a Lego brick head. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Oh, oh, Lego brick head. Ah. Yeah. Lily is unimpressed with me. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Jill. Oh, someone, Anne Ferguson's just said, Happy birthday, Lilia. Oh. Looks like you had a blast. I did. Thank, 
Thank you, Anne. <laughs> Lisa, how do you handle serving alcohol to minors in England? Do you have to check what about kids driving home afterwards? Well, Lilia's birthday party, there were no minors. They were all 18 and over, and 18 is the legal age for drinking in the UK. And if they uh, uh, yeah, well, actually, there were a couple of people driving and they just weren't drinking. So, and our oh, drink driving laws are uh, really what's the word I'm looking for? Zero tolerance. Oh, yeah, zero tolerance. Strict. Yeah, very strict. Zero tolerance. And I, I, you know, personally don't know anybody that would risk it getting drunk and driving. I well, just, no. and certainly none of Lilia's friends, but there were a couple that were just on the water. Uh, because they've just learned to drive and driving's more fun than drinking at that age. Uh, if they were in a pub, uh, for example, Lilia went out for a drink with her boyfriend in the week. Uh, if they're in a pub, they get challenged for ID if they look under the age of 25. And I think that's the same case in supermarkets as well, if they're buying alcohol in a shop. The, to challenge is if people feel you look under 25, just because it can be so hard to tell sometimes. but. Um, Lilia at 18 can legally go into a pub or a restaurant or a bar or a supermarket and buy alcohol for her own consumption. And we weren't selling alcohol either, we just provided it. We just made a little Phoebe bar. Uh, Phoebe, Phoebe, who's 13 and obviously wasn't having any drink, although she had enough E numbers in the cherry aid uh, to keep her going on the evening. She was very excited to get to set up the bar area and pretend like she had her own shop. Oh my goodness, this comment is brilliant. Bub5257. Thanks, Ali. Lovely video as usual. Thank you. Do you follow Lauren and the books? Yes, I do. I love her. Uh, I need to catch up on some of her videos, but yes, I do. She is such a joyful person. She is, I agree, as well as a fabulous YouTuber. 100% agree with that. I follow what Victoria read because of you, so thank you for that. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, I just love Victoria. And then she said, we say Nike here in Australia, because we say we tend to say Nike here, but we say a lot of stuff nobody else says. For example, good day and crikey. <laughs> we say crikey. Not often. Normally if we're pretending to be Australian. <laughs> and bonza. Do you say bonza? Or is that just us stereotyping everyone in Australia? <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much. I think your name might be Chris. Thank you, thank you, Chris or Bob, for that question. Lee Martin, hope you and your family are doing well. We are. I have two different questions for you. One, is there a book you remember reading to your daughters when they were growing up where you did all the different voices? <laughs> so, shall we say it on three? Yeah. I think we're thinking of the same one, aren't we? Yeah. One, two, three. The smartest, smartest giant, giant in town. town. <laughs> by Julia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By Julia Donaldson. Dan used to read them. Dan's really good at voices and accents, and he used to read them The Smartest Giant in Town, and every single animal had a different accent, and it was just brilliant. It was their favourite thing. Uh, yeah, that was such a good book. Two, you're very creative. Have you ever made your own clothes or lingerie? Take care and keep making the videos. No, well, yes, I, no. Have I ever made my own clothes? No, uh, you've made jumpers. Yeah, well, I've made, I've uh, knitted, and knitted and crocheted garments and accessories, but I've ever, I've ever sewed. Sewn? Oh, 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 yeah, I've, I've sewn a, you made a, dress. a dress with my friend uh, Sarah. So if you don't watch Sarah, I'm sure you do. Um, she has yarn mugs. She has the most lovely, lovely YouTube channel. Uh, her videos are so gentle, so calming, and she often does sew along videos or sew with me videos. She uh, very kindly took time out of her life and spent a whole day with me teaching me how to sew a dress, and I love the finished outcome. If I, if I can, I'll put a picture up of what it looks like. It's a halloween -y fabric. So that's the only dress I've, the only thing I've um, sewn, for, sewed, sewn so, for myself. But I would love to make my own clothes. And I've seen Ellie over at Craft House Magic has made her own, uh, I think she's made bras, knickers, uh, even sanitary towels and things. And she's, a, she's amazing at that. And I do watch with green eyes thinking one day, one day, I would love to do that. It's just a matter of, time at the moment just fitting things in with everything else so 
Do you mind? I'm, I'm vlogging here. I'm cooking dinner. Do you mind? I'm going to do one more question for now, but I will pick up the other questions later in the month. This is it's coming up as LL29... Cool <laughs> LL Cool J. No. LL29123. I don't know when they started adding all these numbers to people's users name, usernames. Would you ever consider Patreon or YouTube community? Um, way back when in 2020, when I started doing vlogs on a much more regular basis, I once considered Patreon, but I decided against it. And I've thought about it a few times again, but I still know that, I, that, I, that, I, that would be too much for me. I like putting my content out on YouTube. Um, I love supporting other people on Patreon. I, I, I do support a few people on there uh, from you know what I can afford. And I think it's such a good idea for creators to uh, be able to form communities and earn a living from what they do. For me, I think that I would put too much pressure on myself and I would, I would have too many thoughts and feelings around it, which just cause me stress and anxiety. So I just, we talked about it and my, how my business model if you like um is set up how, how i earn from doing what i do on youtube and patreon is at the moment never say never to anything just not something for me i have my ko-fi account which um works really well for me and that's linked underneath i do occasionally post on there although i haven't like this month or for a little while with just extra little posts or images or sometimes i'll do an extra little ko-fi video just on there but there's no expectations on Kofi for that uh, so that works best for me along with my YouTube earnings and money that I get from working with sponsors who I choose very carefully as well and um, from now that is my business model that makes me sound much grander than I am <laughs> for how I um, make my hobby into something that helps to support my family because otherwise I wouldn't be able to work part-time only two days a week and I wouldn't be able to be here as much as I am. It pays for equipment that I use and everything that I need for filming but also uh, and when I say it pays for I mean Kofi donations and uh, YouTube income and sponsorship income and uh, it means that my hobby which I love, I love editing videos, I love making videos is um, something that I can reasonably put the time into. Does that all make sense, Dan? It makes sense to me. Normally it's just well, me. I know business. <laughs> In case you couldn't guess from the little pause there, he just did that. <laughs> that would be a good thumbnail, wouldn't it? <laughs> you point it in your face. Normally I film on my own, so it's quite nice to have someone to speak to and go, do I sound like a complete twonk? Yeah, so I hope that answers uh, that question as well. There's a few more questions um, to go, but I don't want to make this video really, really long. So I will answer more as we go on in the month. I'm going to go and put the toppings on my pizza. By the way, twinkly lights, twinkly lights, you see? Never, never going to run out of places for twinkly lights. In fact, the ones, so I've got the opposite problem with the ones in the kitchen. They start up here. And they go all the way round the kitchen. Sorry if this is making you dizzy. All the way around there and back above the clock and then down the wall. And then I still had loads left over. So I just popped them in a jar on the floor and made a little firefly oh, jar. <laughs> so on today's pizza, we have got light mozzarella. Some really nice fine tomatoes, some yellow pepper, and some caramelized onion chutney. And now I'm going to put, oops, I'm going to put the kale packet into the caramelized onion, but also put some kale onto the pizza. It's twenty past ten. Oh, my work bag's still behind me. I need to sort that out. Lydia's just gone to bed. We've had a lovely evening. My pizza was lovely. We've been watching Whitstable Pearl. I'm really enjoying it. I've just realised I didn't finish the vlog. So this is me finishing it. Goodbye. See you tomorrow for Saturday. Bye.